I, I believe in the medicine. I believe in what it can do to people. And I believe that pretty much is awakening. So we all can live the life that we are supposed to live. Welcome to the Whole You Podcast. I'm Shannon O'Brien. These episodes explore topics related to pursuing your life's work and living a balanced, purposeful life. We dive into subjects related to wellness, career, and service. We hope you feel engaged in the conversations, share your comments, and click subscribe. Today, I'm very grateful to welcome Gina Aprile. Gina grew up in Lima, Peru, and moved to the United States at the age of 23. She attended Northern Arizona University, where she obtained a degree in business administration. Over the years, she worked at various places, including prestigious spas in Scottsdale and at American Express. However, Gina learned that working in an office was not a good fit for her, so she quit to go back to school for a master's in Chinese medicine. In 2012, during a return to Peru, Gina had her first experience with a plant medicine called San Pedro. This began a journey of self-discovery, which ultimately led to her biggest life decision ever. In 2016, she left school, sold her house, and moved to the Sacred Valley of Peru to immerse herself in the exploration of plant medicine more deeply. She now lives in Peru with her partner and their son, Rayo. Gina, thank you so much for being on the Whole You podcast. Hi, Shannon. Thank you for having me. So based on your bio, it sounds like you made a major life change. And I think a lot of listeners, a lot of people in general, want to make major changes, but maybe they're too scared to do that. So maybe to begin, can you talk more about that big decision and how you made those changes? When I came here to the Valley in 2011, I I really fell in love with the place. And then the following year, 2012, that's the first time I actually drank San Pedro. And I experienced the energy of the place. So I kind of knew that I was going to end up here. You know, that the the feeling of me being here was stronger. But my mind didn't know how I was going to make it. Because I I was married. I was going to school. I was doing so many things, you know. So the question, so how am I going to move here? How am I going to work? What am I going to do? How am I going to make money? So all these questions from my mind were like, okay, you know, you can't. You can't do this. At some point, I realized that that there was going to be a time where my heart, when my heart was going to be stronger than my mind and that my heart was going to say it's time to move. So that's what happened in 2016. I I, I used to come to Peru, to the Sacred Valley to do medicine in the summer. So I came in the summer of 2016 just for like two or three months where I was going to do a lot of medicine, some Pedro mainly, and some ayahuasca. And then suddenly I realized that this place was the place for me where I needed to be. And I just knew it. My heart said, you have to do it. And it was so strong and was so clear that I made that decision, which was kind of scary at the moment because, you know, pretty much I left everything, Mm. everything, school and sold my house and came here with just like, you know, like the intuition and hoping that things were going to go right and a lot of trust, of course. But it was mainly following my heart. It it was not my mind. It was my heart. That's a very big challenge, especially these days when there are so many conflicting responsibilities, like you said, school and the house and logically in your mind, it didn't make sense at all. So to listen to your heart, I guess that's something that San Pedro or plant medicine helps with. So I want to start to dive into that now. You mentioned San Pedro, you mentioned ayahuasca. I think people may or may not have even heard of these things. So I think that that's a large part of what this discussion will be about is introducing people to this if they're not already aware. You know, what is it? What are the effects? Can you dive a little bit more into what plant medicine actually is? Well, uh, my experience is mainly with, with San Pedro and ayahuasca. Uh, they're both psychedelic um, plants. Uh, my belief is that is that besides the chemistry, you know, that of, of the psychedelic part, um, they also have a spirit. So they are spirit plants, and they are here to help us with lessons, with healing, and learn more about ourselves, love ourselves more, and actually live this life. 
San Pedro for me is the medicine of the heart. It opens up your heart and connects you with that part of you that is wisdom, that is something that we all have. It kind of helps you a little bit organize your thoughts because sometimes the mind uh, is polluted by limiting thoughts, thoughts that come from school, from society that tells you how you should be, how you should behave. And sometimes we follow those thoughts, those ideas and become the person that society wants us to be, but do not give us the time to be who we really want to be. But I feel that gives you that chance, opens your heart and helps you dive within that part of yourself, which is you and your own wisdom. Ayahuasca is a be beautiful medicine too. It's a little bit different. It, it, um, San Pedro, you do it during the day. Ayahuasca, you do it, you do it during the night. Um, but it is more, for me, ayahuasca is more, um, it also helps you open your heart, but it brings a lot of uh, healing. Let's say if you had and uh, uh, traumas, if you had and um, um, things happening to you in this life, even sometimes in past lives, it helps you kind of heal those traumas and, and also I think helps you with your thoughts, you know, with, with the idea of you have of reality. And what I'm saying is that sometimes we have this perception of what the world is, but this perception not, might, not, might not be real. So these plant medicines help you see the reality of things. Mm. And maybe for the Western mind or Western trained listener, they're thinking psychedelic plants and plants with spirits and healing. It might sound foreign to a lot of people. And I guess one thing to address to get out of the way are, are there any concerns or are there any um, disclaimers or cautions that people need to be aware of just so we, you know, address it right up front and get it out of the way in this conversation so we can really dive deeper into the positive effects. What would you say to anybody who's skeptical or uncertain or, you know, scared or has any sort of negative reaction when they think psychedelic plant medicine, what are you actually talking about? Well, first of all, um, I never push, you know, or tell people you should drink medicine. This is, I think, a call. Like you have a call, like, you know, either it's curiosity or you heard it or you read about it. You know, so first it is a call. Mm -hmm. I would never tell somebody, oh, you have this and go drink. No. Like, I feel that this, somebody tells me, my, Gina, I'll ask me what my experience is, I'll tell them my experience, but it has to come to them. They have to have the, the feeling that, oh, you know what, there is something about this that interests me. However, I also advise people to be very careful who they choose to drink with, because it is planned, and sometimes people think that, oh, I'm drinking a tea, and it's like a herbal tea. No, this is very serious medicine. So first of all, you have to be pretty much healthy. So for example, a person that is going to serve medicine first will ask you, like if you take any medications, there are some medications that don't go with the medicine. So they will probably tell you, um, stop taking this medicine, you know, for a few days, or no, you cannot drink the medicine because it has interactions with the medication you are taking. People mm. that of psychological challenges like bipolar disorders, schizophrenia, for example, are not good candidates for this kind of plant medicine because it might make it worse. Now, that doesn't mean they, they cannot drink it. It's just that they need to find a shaman that is specialized in helping with them. So I would recommend people that, you know, are healthy. I mean, you can have anxiety, um, you know, maybe a little depression, but if it's in the medical diagnosed, you have to be very careful. You cannot just go and drink it. That is very important. And so that's the medical part. And then it is pretty much if people are afraid, sometimes what happens, people are afraid because of some religious background, you know, and for some religions, doing this plant medicine is uh, it's a sin. You know, it's playing with the dark. And so that's something that they have to check within themselves. But for me, in my own experience, that was actually one of the first challenges I had. And I'm not a very religious person, but I grew up in, in, a, in, in a society with, and that follows the Catholic Church. So when I started doing medicine, you know, then questions about darkness started to arise. But 
with time, I learned to actually explore those fears and realize that they were just fears, that they were not really true. And I came to balance pretty much like a yin and yang, that in life there is light, but there is darkness and, and it's okay. It's, it's just what life brings. And that darkness is not necessarily bad. It is just part of life. So how do you work with it? And this is actually the beautiful thing about medicine, talking about fears, is that it helps you with the fear. Sometimes it brings those fears so you can heal those and then realize that it's just a fear. At the end of the day, I think that the biggest fear we have is of our own self. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about the medicine. It brings what you need. Some people think that plant medicine will only take you to like all oh, this uh, Zen zone, which is beautiful. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it brings things that we need to look at. Like, what are my fears? And the nice thing about exploring your fears is that you can heal those. And once you heal those fears, you are free. I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to move here to Peru. And it could be you can be a professional, you can be a lawyer, you can be and they are nurse, a doctor, and then, you know, all of us have fears and limiting thoughts that do not allow us to reach that full potential. But if we explore those fears, maybe, you know, you have fear of speaking in public, and maybe that comes from something that happened to you in the childhood. And who knows, maybe the plant medicine will bring that um, event that created that trauma. Maybe you can heal that. But there's just many things that can happen. Um, but it's beautiful how it brings those fears sometimes so we can heal them and that we can be free of those. Mm. That makes a lot of sense to question the fear and question where is this judgment or fear of this plant medicine coming from? I would imagine it seems very mysterious or maybe gets a bad rap because people equate it to you know some street drugs that are abused. But ironically, I was on the Rainforest Trust website and I read that half of the top 10 prescription drugs in the U.S. are of animal, plant, or bioorganism origin. And nearly 90% of human diseases known to medical science can be treated with prescription drugs derived from nature. So even though we might think it's mysterious or it's spooky or scary, people just aren't aware that the drugs that we're ingesting anyway to treat diseases are probably deriving from nature. Do you find that, that there's a mixed perception of plant medicine versus Western medicine? Yes, actually, going back to what you were, you were talking about, recreational drugs, some people have the belief that ayahuasca and some bed are recreational drugs. Mm. What I've heard is that most people use drugs or alcohol sometimes to get away from those problems. You know, like I have problems or I'm bored, I want to have this distraction. The difference between recreational drugs and uh, plant medicine is that plant medicine will not take away from those problems. In fact, it will bring you to what you need. For example, people are sad or depressed. Okay, I'm going to go and drink. So I forget about my troubles. Plant medicine brings those issues to you and say, this is something you have to look at. So instead of escaping, it's bringing you to your problems and questioning, like, why am I sad? Why am I depressed? Why am I anxious? Why am I angry? Why am I not fulfilled in this life? And so this plant medicine does that. It brings you to that. With just uh, with Western medicine medication, um, actually, a lot of people come to Peru to heal some and the physical diseases. There are Tons of plants in the jungle. Um, of course, there is some tribes like the Chipibos that they know about, you know, like these, these plants. And it hasn't been my experience, but I've heard from other um, people, some other retreats where people come with different di in diseases and they find healing for them. Plants from the, from, from the jungle. So maybe not specifically ayahuasca or, or San Pedro that is going to heal you, but there are some other plants um, from the jungle that people take to specifically heal a disease. That's a really important distinction that you made, that recreational drugs are more of a distraction or a, an escape, whereas these plant medicines are used as a tool to go deeper and to heal and face your problems and, and face your life and explore your life. Getting into a little bit of a technical question, you had mentioned the word shaman before, and maybe that's in the common lexicon these days, but what is a shaman? What the ceremony actually looks like? 
who's there, how long does it last, these kind of details. So for both San Pedro and ayahuasca, uh, it comes in a liquid form, like a tea. So with San Pedro, for instance, the people that I, I drink with the shaman, the shaman is pretty much the facilitator, the person that is going to hold space. This person usually calls for a spirit because we believe that the plant has a spirit. And also we call for other spirits. You can call, for example, people are invited to call for, they, they believe in Jesus, in Jesus, Buddha, Buddha, you know, if they're agnostic, you know, like just themselves and so we they call for spirit they call for protection for the place and they sit together for some better in the morning let's say you start drinking 8 30 or 9 a.m you drink the tea and then you just lay down or sit and wait for the medicine to start working you're going to still you're going to start feeling the medicine maybe within an hour or two and the shaman or facilitator will come around and check on you, see how you're doing, if you feel the medicine, if you need to drink a little bit more, and if you want to talk about something that just came up during the medicine, maybe a memory, maybe uh, some physical discomfort, the shaman or facilitator will be there to make sure that and uh, that you are okay, and he will be or she will be available if you need to talk about something. But mostly this is a work for you, like inner inner work, where you have the day. Uh, San Pedro usually ends around 5 or 6 p.m., so you have the entire day to just be with the medicine and be with yourself. Usually around 5 or 6, they close ceremony. Some people continue feeling um, the, the medicine or the effects of the medicine a little bit longer, let's say 9, 10, you know, 11, 12 at night time. Um, you don't need anything through uh, the day, just around uh, midday or 1. They give you a a bowl of fruit, and then uh, six or seven uh, vegetable soup. And that's pretty much it. And usually the following day, there is a sharing where people um, share their experiences. And by the way, during the ceremony, if it's a group ceremony, you don't talk to the other participants. You only talk to the, the shaman or facilitator. For ayahuasca, it usually it takes place at night when it's dark, so around maybe like 7 to 9 p.m. The shaman sits in the in a room, and then all the participants are in the room. Usually it's like in a circle. And as so you drink the medicine in a half an hour or an hour, you start feeling the medicine. It's usually dark, so you are given a bucket uh, because sometimes there is purging. And so that then you start purging, and then you... The difference is that with the ayahuasca, the facilitator usually the, or the shaman doesn't come and check on you. The person just sits and starts singing songs. They call them ícaros. These are medicine songs that and they help move the energy and also bring healing to the group. The shaman might come and sit in front of each, each participant and sing a song for each one, bringing medicine. But this is more controlled, like the shaman is there all the time with the participants singing song, songs pretty much the entire time. It may last from two to four hours. And then when the shaman feels that everybody uh, is pretty much back, <laughs> uh, closes a ceremony and then people go to bed. When the shaman thinks that people are back, where are they back from? <laughs> where did they go? Just with psychedelics and especially mostly with ayahuasca, sometimes you start having visions, you know, so you start have visions, you start like in an inner journey. Mm -hmm. So um, there is this word that they use in, in, in ayahuasca, which is uh, mariación. It's kind of like feeling a little bit dizzy. So you're kind of like, some people actually kind of like have experience, out, out, out of body experiences, but sometimes you are in your body, but your mind probably is going, you know, to your childhood or to, um, I don't know, to maybe a, a different world that you've never experienced before, or just, you know, a combination of visions of lights and, you uh, um, so that's what I say, you know, sometimes you are, your mind is there. So when, when I say back, is that you're back into your mind. You don't have the feelings of the, the psychedelic medicine anymore. I see. And then this sounds like a very intense and I'm sure profound experience that people are having. And I like that with the San Pedro, you said the next day people are sharing their experience. How do you integrate this into your life? Is it you know, a one-time thing that happens and then people just go back to their life or is it always profound and life-changing as it was with you as we 
to go back to the beginning of our conversation, you really shifted your whole life and started to listen to your heart and made these major life changes. Does that always happen? Or, or what is the different spectrum of experiences and how do people integrate this plant medicine journey into their everyday life? I've met many people doing like that have come to Peru to do medicine. I've seen their progress. You know, some people come and drink only once and they're fine with it. Some people come every year or they've said your first year they drink once and then the second year they drink twice and then the third year they come and they want more. So it depends where they are. Um, I believe the medicine and your soul know what you need. And so sometimes people just drink and, you know, one time and they get, okay, this is the answer I was looking for and I'm good. And I go back home and I apply that to my life. You know, some people realize that, oh, the only thing I need to do probably is spend more time in nature and walking on the grass. And they're like, you know what, I'm going to do that. They go back home and that's what they do. And they feel good. We are all in different paths. You know, we all have our journeys. We don't all have to like immerse ourselves in plant medicine. Sometimes, you know, we have different paths, you know, different jobs. But I believe that even if it's one time that you drink, it it still brings a lot of lessons and wisdom. And usually it is your own wisdom. It's not, you know, the shaman's wisdom. I mean, they, they sometimes, you know, have nice things to share. But this is pretty much an invitation to you, to your own wisdom. And so you take it home with you. And mm. it's beautiful, actually, to apply it when you go back home. And I think and I hope that more people, uh, let's say, from the States or from the Western world, come and, and, and drink a little bit of this medicine to help them. Because it is to help. It's just, it, it is a tool. You know, not everybody has to drink plant medicine to reach this, this, uh, this point of um, allowing themselves to to get to know themselves. I mean, you can do meditation, you can do yoga, you can, there's so many things that you can do or just be in, in science with yourself or being in nature. Uh, but what I feel San Pedro does is, is it's like an eye opener. Mm. Like it's, and, and it's an accelerator, you know, so it helps you sometimes see things that we are not able to see in the everyday life. So if you come and drink once and you get the message, you take it and apply it in the Western world. The Western world does need this. We unfortunately are so busy. Our minds are so busy with uh, social media, with TV, and we don't really have the chance, the opportunity to look within ourselves and ask ourselves, who am I? What am I doing here? What is my purpose? Because we are really busy. And so this is, it would be nice that more people take time to dive within themselves to know who they really are and take that to the Western world because the Western world needs that. I've noticed that a lot of people from the Western world come to the valley and they share with us their experiences of feeling empty, not fulfilled. Like I've got the house, I've got the car, I've got the wife, I've got the husband, I've got the kids, I have the business, but I feel empty. The feeling of emptiness comes because they don't know, they haven't gone with themselves. There is such a need. I think it's something that we're born with, is wanting to know who we are. And and that actually sometimes is connected to spirituality, to like, you can call it religion, but it's to God, you know, your connection with yourself. And that's why I feel that a lot of people from the Western world feel, feel empty, even though they have achieved so many things. Right. That's so profound and i imagine that people listening to this might be curious to learn more are there any resources that you recommend that people could explore to research and find out more about it well to be honest with you i don't know what is out there like if you google stuff i know there is a lot of things some of things are positive some things are negative to be honest when i came to peru i mean i didn't know anything about medicine it was it just happened you know mm. just presented itself and then I explored it while I was here there's something that I, I, I want to tell people please be very careful who you choose to drink with because as beautiful as the medicine is unfortunately there is some so-called shamans or healers who do not have the experience or have integrity and are doing this just for the money because we all want you know to connect with ourselves and some people are taking advantage of this opportunity so i recommend people to before they, they they go to do research you know go to a retreat that has reviews 
or you know if they want i can refer them i i know different people that can do really good work and they have and uh, good ethics well, as i said you know in the internet you might find a lot of information um but if they decide to to do it uh please you know like do do your homework and do research and make sure that the place that you're going to go to has good reviews and that it's legit that makes a lot of sense if you're going to go into such a an important experience you want to make sure that you're dealing with professionals and people like you said who have integrity and are doing it for the right reasons if if people I mean, the people that are listening to 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 this and the interview, you know, if they have, you know, specific questions or fears, sometimes, you know, fears, they're more than welcome to contact me and I can tell them a little bit more. I believe in the medicine and I believe in what it can do to people. And I believe that pretty much is awakening. This is what the medicine is, awakening. So we all can live the life that we are supposed to live. But for me, it is an honor. and my contribution to, to to the world if if I can share my experiences so more people can try this medicine and can find happiness and healing and when I say happiness it's not like oh you know I mean jumping up and down and and uh, and always be in that state of, of wow you know like I'm, I'm full of joy sometimes happiness is, it is just like living life and accepting life for what it is. Life is going to bring challenges no matter what. Life will bring life. But how do we react to that and how we are in peace with that? That's the key. This is not life-changing where it's going to make your life a paradise with rainbows for the for the remainder of your life. There's still going to be challenges and the reality of life, but this is just helping you bring a different perspective and attitude to what's happening in your life. Yes, and love, you know, love and acceptance and you know, like us, you know, being more human. I think that we've lost so much of that humanity. You know, we all live, by, you know, in fear, um, just living, you know, for ourselves. But I think our true nature is to actually love and trust and accept others. You know, I think that when we all, all of us realize that this will be, be a better world, there will not be the need of, you know, trying to stop wars or, 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 or telling people you have to be good. It will be just something that is born in you to love, to treat others with respect, to treat animals with respect, to treat Mother Nature with respect, to treat yourself with respect. Mm -hmm. You know, this is needed. We need to love ourselves because that's the only way that we're going to love others. If we don't love ourselves, if we don't accept ourselves, if we don't live in peace within ourselves and say, you know what, I love you, I accept you just as you are, we have to begin with ourselves. And when we change things within ourselves, then the world will change. I would agree 100% that self-love and self-acceptance is, is where it begins. There's a quote, I'll paraphrase something like, so many people think of changing the world, but no one really thinks of changing themselves. But as you said, when it when you start with yourself, your outer circumstances will change as well. Mm -hmm. Gina, thank you so much for spending time with us today. This was very, very valuable. And uh, I will provide my email, which is hello at wholeyou.info, so people can email me to get in touch with you if they, if they so choose. Thank you for offering that. Thank you for your generosity of sharing your, your knowledge and experiences and being open to answer any questions or help guide someone who might be curious about this. Thank you so much, Shannon. Thank you, um, everyone, for listening. For more insights on wellness, career, and service, check out wholeyou.info. Thanks for listening, and I'm wishing you a balanced, purposeful day.